that was actually being asked to be done. Tony's apparently low-key approach is producing increasingly confident children. Book, video, rubber, stamp, bottle of water. Let's see if you're going to tell me which ones you forgot. Glue stick, hole <laughs> punch, hole pen. So it won't be good if the phone rang like the coat was open. So tell me more about how you remember and how you're going to. Like if these two make a sound, yeah. and I'll probably remember it that way. Like, because this one makes sound as well. Yeah. Like I can like put all the p things in a sound compartment, and then like this, it makes a sound. You got to see things. You got to smell things. You got to taste things. Yeah. You got to touch things. Yeah. So the left side of the brain, right side of the brain, we have rhythm, colour, imagination, daydreaming, and space. So what do you think the left side contains? Three, it's Law and Zoe. Act four, uh, Aaron, and Gary, and Sheridan. After analysing the results, Vivian Hill and Jude Mortel returned to Beechwood School to deliver their findings. Overall, within the, the group of six children, we saw that they had made significant progress, i.e. more than you would expect with maturity and time and practice effects in 70% of the cognitive skills that we assessed, which is really quite a powerful and impressive finding. But the thing that I think struck me most as the highest level of significance was the change in their verbal skills and abilities. The children have made five times the level of progress in their verbal skills that we would have expected in the time frame. Five times? Five times. They've moved from the very lowest end of the average ability range to securely average and some of them are in the above average range now. All the children show a dramatic improvement in their abilities. But Sheridan appears to have also found the elusive qualities of self-motivation and focus. Now we're going to do one more. Okay. First word that I want you to tell me about is purpose. What does purpose oh, right. mean? Say you had a TV in your hand, mm -hmm. yeah, someone's below you, you like you drop the telly on purpose. Like deliberate. So, deliberate. Good. Even more important, his behaviour has shifted and he doesn't feel under pressure from the peer group not to enjoy learning and not to participate. He's actually identified that learning can be fun. I like um Geography, like maths, like English, like history, and sometimes BSRE. The changes in Sheridan are just so marked that it's almost very, very difficult to believe it's the same child. It's really quite remarkable, and really, I don't think if I hadn't personally witnessed it that I'd necessarily believe it. Tony Bazan has demonstrated a huge improvement in all the children. But is there any evidence that one of them has the potential for genius? What I think Tony Bazan has shown is that you can increase children's mental ability enormously with the right kind of attention and opportunities. There is no question about that, and he has done it brilliantly. Such was the interest in the BBC documentary that it sparked discussion about Tony Bazan's methods on other television programmes. But your mind mapping, isn't that more to do with um, recall no. and organisation? No, mind mapping is, is, is basically a tool designed to help a child unleash its intelligence. It uses images, it uses association. Now, the new scientist re recently said the capacity of the average brain has no limits. A mind map is like a Swiss army knife for the brain that allows them to map their thoughts for memory, for creativity, for essays, for whatever it happens to be. And we weren't only teaching them mind mapping, we were teaching them memory skills, teaching them about their brains, about the whole nature of communication, about well, their multiple intelligences. Well, one has to say that the teachers involved in this, um, six months after you'd gone in, said that you had achieved extraordinary results. Oh, thank you.